Hi, my name is Bill Raymond, and this is the first in a two-part series where I walk you through using Microsoft Forms. To access Forms, you're going to need a valid Office 365 account, and you can go to forms.office.com. This video is going to be broken into two parts, Forms and Quizzes. I'm going to walk through Forms in this video. You can look in the notes in the comment section below this video on YouTube to get the second link. So I'll go ahead and click New Form and we'll get started. Before you create your form, you really want to think about what you're trying to accomplish. You're probably trying to elicit feedback either from your employees within your organization or from customers outside of your organization and you're trying to make more informed decisions with the responses. For this particular form, we're going to pretend we are a software company looking to get feedback on our product from our customers. Let's start off by titling the form. So I'll type product feedback request. And then we'll just say in the description, we would love to hear what you think. Chances are you're going to ask some more specific questions about your product, like how do you like this particular feature? but we're gonna just remain pretty wide open here with our questions. So that's our title. The first thing I'm gonna point out with forms is see the saved up here. As you're typing, forms automatically saves. So there is no save button. Also, there's no undo button. But if we come back here to forms, you can see there is the form with the product request um, link already. So I can just come back here and continue working and start adding questions. We're going to ask our first question. So I'll click the add question button and you can see there's four options, choice, text, rating, and date. I'll walk you through each one of these, but right now we're just going to choose rating. And here we're going to say, how do you like our product overall? Now you can see there's some stars here. You can add more stars or you could even change the symbol from stars to a number. I'm gonna go back to five here, and you can notice that first of all, there's no option to choose any number of levels. Microsoft gives you five or 10. I actually think that's pretty smart. This helps standardize reporting. Now over here on the right-hand side, when we choose star, this is pretty obvious that when you click these stars, the higher the star rating, the better you like the product. However, if you choose numbers, does one mean, yes, you're number one, I love it, or does one mean, I really don't like your product? There's two ways to address this. One way to address this is to click this little context menu down on the bottom right, and you can choose subtitle. Here you can go ahead and type something like, five being the best. Or you can turn off that subtitle and you could come over here to the context menu and choose label. And here you can say for one, I don't like the product or five, I love it. Now to see what this looks like, you really can't preview it until you pre click the preview button here at the top. So let's come up here to the top of the browser, click the preview link and here you can see there's our I don't like it and I love it options. I'll go ahead and go back. I'm gonna make this a star again and move on to the next question. This time we're going to give a choice. Our product is getting a facelift and we want to find out what customers think about our new logo. So here is what we are thinking about our new logo. What do you think? It represents the new functionality. It does not represent the product's functionality. I'm indifferent. Keep the old logo. Now, what I'm doing is asking questions uh, 
I'm almost forcing questions. I'm saying, hey, here's the one that we kind of want you to respond yes to. So we'll put that one at the top and we'll say, oh, this is the, the old one down at the bottom. So what we might want to do is kind of shuffle these questions based on each refresh of the browser or every time someone clicks on the, the survey. So what we can do is come here to the context menu and we can choose shuffle options. Now we'll click preview up here at the top. And you can see it starts with I'm indifferent in this form survey. But when we come back, remember, it says it represents the new functionality in this one. So what happens is the form actually shuffled these around for us. So that's good. That way we're not leading the witness as they say. Now you might have noticed that we're asking the customer to look at the logo, but we aren't actually showing it. So how about we add that? So if we come over the, to the question itself and mouse over it, you can see that there's an insert media option. We can insert an image or video. We'll choose image. And then I'll just go ahead and choose upload. I'll choose the new logo. And there, now the form has the new logo. You might be wondering what this looks like in the form itself when the respondent is reading it. So I'll click preview. And now you can see there's that logo sitting inside the form. And I also have an option to click mobile. And this is what it looks like in the mobile form. Now we're going to ask another question. This time we're going to choose text. Now this text option is a little misleading because you can actually come down here to this little context menu and you can go to restrictions and you can actually say, hey, it should be numbers. And that number has to be greater than five, or you could say this number has to be between five and eight. So you can actually set up a answer that is responding with just sort of a number that someone types. I'm just gonna go ahead and make, turn off that restriction and just make it plain old text. Here's what I'm going to ask. What do you think about our products or our product? And you know, you might want to even be a little bit more descriptive with this. So if you click the context menu, you can choose subtitle. And here you can say, please be honest. We can take it. And then you might also want to give the customer some space to enter some more information. So you can choose long answer. So basically when you're setting up these questions, notice now that as we scroll up to the top, they're all going in a certain direction. Now there's this thing called branching, which I'll get into in a second. However, you can move things around. Let's say I don't want this to be the second question. I want to find out the customer's opinion of the product first. So what I can do is just click anywhere inside of this question and move it down. So now when I scroll, you can see that third one that we originally, the one that was originally a third question is now the second question. And now we've got the logo question down here. If you don't like the question, you can delete it. You can certainly move it back up again. And you could even copy the question if you have a similar question that you want to ask again. There's one more type of question you can add, and that is a date question. And in this one, we're going to say, when did you start using our product? And that's it. Uh, there's not much more that you can do with the date picker here. You can, of course, make it required or add that subtitle, but that's it. It's really straightforward. Okay, our form's looking pretty good now. However, one of the most important things that we wanted to ask in this form is about this logo, whether or not people like it or not. And the people that we're most interested in getting feedback from is the people that respond with, it does not represent the product's functionality. So only when this is clicked, do we want to ask another question. So what I'm going to do is come down here to add question, make it text and say, why do you feel this way? And then I'm going to move this up. So it's right underneath this question. Now, technically I didn't need to move it up, but I will say it's much easier to manage things when we get into this thing called branching by doing it this way. What we're going to do is go to this context menu at the top right and choose branching. This opens up a similar window, but it's slightly different. 
And if I scroll down here to our question, what do you think about our new logo? You can see you can choose where do you want each one of these things to go? So I want every single question to go to question number five. When did you start using the product? I want it to go to the end. But if it does not represent the product's functionality, I want to ask this one other question. So I can go ahead and choose that and we'll go back to our form. And then what we're going to do is preview it. So we'll go ahead and click on this preview link at the top. And now let's take a look at this question here. First, I'm going to point out the last question. When did you start using the product? That does not appear yet because now the questions that appear are completely based on these radio buttons. So here it says it does represent new functionality. There's that question. Keep the old logo. There's that same question. I'm indifferent. Same question. Now, because we have a different branch for this particular one, because it does not represent the product's functionality. Now you can see it says, why do you feel this way? And then it also asks this question about when did you start using the product? Before we send this form out to customers, let's make this form look a little bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and click on this product feedback request, and I'm going to add the logo for the current product, or rather, I'm going to add the current logo that we're using for the product. The other thing I'm going to do here is come to this more options thing and come to settings. And here what I'm going to choose is anyone with the link can respond. That means people outside your organization can respond. By the way, this is not something a lot of people are familiar with with Office 365. Almost everything you do in Office 365 requires someone to be part of Office 365. Now, if this were a question that we're asking internally to employees, then you choose this option and people have to be in your organization already. But here we can say this is available to anyone on the web. You can also set a start and end date for the responses. And I think the shuffle questions thing is still being worked on by Microsoft. Another thing we can do is add a theme. So I'm going to click the theme option up here at the top. And you can see that maybe you can choose a color that more closely matches the logo or the design. And you can see it's changing colors. You also have some cute little options here that Microsoft provides. Or you can go ahead and add an image. So for example, I'm going to do a Bing search for technology and choose an image. It'll upload it and then put that in the background. There. Okay, now we want to share our form with our customer. So we click the share button at the top and then we can just click copy to get the URL. Now you can also do a QR code and embed code. And if you click email, it'll open up your default email program with a link to this form. What I'm going to do now is go to another browser that I have open. And this here is going to be in um, a browser that's in incognito mode. And I'll just go ahead and paste this form into the URL. And now as a customer, this is what I see. How do you uh, like the product? Tell us what you think. Here's where I could say I, it does not represent the product's functionality. Um, needs more color. I'm just responding here. And then finally I can choose a date and then I'll click submit. Now this form, there is no such thing as an app for Microsoft Forms. So basically what's going to happen is everyone will always be directed to the browser and it always looks good on a larger screen desktop browser or on a phone. And you can see here the form was done and you're finished. Let's go ahead back to our user interface. I'll close down the share menu and we can see responses already says one. I'm going to come over here and click on that and we can see what this looks like. As you can see, 
we've got a pretty visual representation of what our responses are looking like. And then I can also just go ahead and click open in Excel. And this is going to open up a uh, version of the responses just in Microsoft Excel. Uh, it's not going to look all that fancy, so you're going to have to create your own reports afterwards. But as you can see here, um, it does collect all the information. And if you are doing this anonymously, uh, you're just sending out the survey, you're probably going to want to put a required field with the person's email or their name or something. Uh, you know, that's up to you, but that's something that you might want to consider when you're building your form. So that's it. That's how you work with Microsoft Forms. There's a lot more to this. There's certainly a lot more options for all of these questions that you can ask, but these are all of the big ticket items for this product. Well, thank you for watching this free video on YouTube. If you like it, I would really appreciate it if you press that subscribe button and the like button. It's incredibly helpful and it keeps the content free. Thanks and I'll catch you in another video.